How's it going guys? This is Don from Pranatech. Uh, today I'm going to show you how easy it is to set up the Yes Welder MIG 205 DS. Uh, this is a welder that I bought a few months ago and I've been welding with it and I built a few projects and I'm pretty impressed with how uh, amazing this thing is. So I basically want to show people once you get one of these welders, if you decide to pick one up, how easy it is to set it up and to begin welding with it. All right, let's get started and I'll show you how to set this thing up. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is get our components out, get everything unpacked and get it all laid out. First thing we're gonna hook up is our ground cable. Get your ground cable and it's a, about a half turn through one slot on the tip Put it in through the slot, turn it clockwise, half a turn till it tightens, and then you have your ground cable attached. There's only one spot to put it in, that's negative, so it's really hard to uh, mess it up. Set that aside. Next thing we're gonna hook up is our MIG gun. This is a European style connection. Uh, it's pretty hard to put this in the wrong way. It's got three small holes and one large hole, so you just line it up on the front of the welder. Slide it in and turn the knob clockwise. Tighten it down. So it seats against the O-ring and then unravel your gun. Next thing we're going to do is hook up the gas line for our shielding gas. There's a brass fitting on the back of the welder right on here and all we do is just thread it in take a crescent wrench and just snug it down doesn't have to be super tight, it's a compression fitting and it just needs to be snug. Next thing we're going to do is do the exact same thing on our shielding gas. You can use either argon or CO2. The argon is a CO2 and argon mix or you can use a straight CO2. Same thing, we're just going to snug it down. and then we're ready to go. Next thing we have to do is load our MIG wire. First thing you gotta do is take off the spool cover, spring, and alignment disc. These three components will come out. You can just set them aside. I'm gonna slide this back. When your MIG wire comes, it'll come in a 10 pound spool. That's the size we want to use for this welder. The two pound small rolls won't fit, so make sure you get the one with the large hole, the 10 pound spool. Uh, leave your wire hooked up till you get the spool in there and tighten down. Push it in, line it up on the hub that's on the inside. Put your outer alignment hub till it centers it. Then put your spring and then your nut. You can tighten this all the way down until it stops. And then you need a pair of wire cutters. At this point we're going to take out our MIG wire. We're going to try and keep it tight so that it doesn't all unravel. At this point hold your MIG wire and take this knob on your drive. I'm gonna zoom in on this so you can see, but you wanna take your tension knob, pull it towards you till it tilts down, and you'll see that there's a spring-loaded 
wheel hub right here that will flip up. We need that up because that's what actually drives the wire. Okay, so here's a little bit closer view of what I was talking about. You're gonna take your tension knob right here. This applies tension to the drive wheel. You're gonna take this, tilt it forward, and you'll see that that tension wheel flips up. This is the tension wheel. It flips up. Then we take our wire, and where it was hooked on the roll, it's usually bent over. So what we want is a clean cut on the end of the wire. We're going to nip off the wire and then we're going to put it in through this right here. This is what's known as a liner. So we're going to slide it in through the liner. We're going to watch it go across the drive wheel. We're going to guide it with our finger into the tip of the tube right there. That tip of the tube goes into the MIG gun. And we want to put it in two or three inches until we feel it's in far enough that it won't fall back out. We're going to tilt our drive wheel tension wheel down and then we're going to flip our tension knob back up until it snaps into place. At that point, you're ready to go. You can close your door. One thing I would mention is that this knob right here uh, is your, how you change your drive wheel. Down below here, if you take this off, you can take your drive wheel and flip it around. There's two different grooves on this drive wheel. One is for 0.8 and one is for 0.9 millimeter, or one is for 30 thousandths and one is for 35 thousandths MIG wire. Make sure you get the side on the inboard side, the furthest in is the one that you need. If you're using 0.9, Put the point nine on the inside, furthest into the machine. And then once you get all this loaded, you can close the door, and then I'll show you how to feed it out through the gun. Okay, once we have the MIG wire loaded, we're then gonna make the gun ready for feeding the wire. You're gonna take your MIG gun, and you're gonna pull off the uh, shielding gas cone. You're going to set that aside and you're going to see your tip. This is one of your consumables. This is the tip that is specific to the size wire that you have. Make sure you have the right tip on. If you have 0.8 wire or 30 thousandths, make sure you have a 0.8 or 30 thousandths tip. If you're using 35 thousandths or 0.9, make sure you have a 0.9 or 35 thousandths tip on there. You're going to take your tip and unscrew it and set it aside because right now we're going to feed the wire through the gun. So you're going to take your gun with the tip off of it. We're going to turn the welder on and then down here at the bottom this is our feed button. This is for manual feed of the wire through the system. What you're going to do is press this button and you're going to listen to the wire feed, you can hear the drive going, and what it's going to do is going to feed the 10 feet of wire through the gun until it comes out the other end, up the other end of the nozzle here. Once we have the wire coming out of the end of the nozzle, you can shut the welder off. At this point, we're going to put our tip back on and screw it in. These don't have to be wrenched on or put on with a pair of pliers, just finger tight is all you really need. Then we're going to put our shielding cup back on, make sure it's seated all the way back. And generally I like to cut my wire off about a quarter inch to five sixteenths out of the front. This is usually a good starting point for just about any MIG weld. At this point, your welder is ready to weld, and we're gonna turn the welder on and I'll go through the basic settings that you're gonna wanna do once you start your new welder up. Okay, this is the main screen on the MIG 205 DS. 
and I'm going to show you the different buttons and what each one does. This is your selector button. This, when you turn on the welder, selects between four fields. We have amperage, we have material thickness, we have voltage, and we have inductance. These are the four things that you can select. And once you select that field, you can then use this, which is the selector knob, and you can turn it to raise and lower whatever values are in each field. So, once you turn the welder on, it automatically defaults to amperage and voltage. And that's what you'll see displayed whenever you're welding and whenever you start the welder up. This button basically selects between 2T and 4T. And what that does, if you're in 2T, when you hold the button, it starts to weld. When you let go of the button, it turns off. In 4T, when you touch the button, it'll start welding and it won't stop until you press the button again and then it'll stop welding. So if you're doing very long welds where you need to do, you know, three feet of weld and you don't want to sit there and have to hold the button, that's when you would switch it to 4T. The majority of time you're going to leave it on 2T because most welds are two to three or four inches and you're just going to weld and then let go of the button when you're done. So the next button down is your MIG and uh, stick and TIG process. Within the MIG process, you have MIG CO2, we have MIG argon, which is under mag, and then we have stick welding, and then we have TIG lift, and then very last we have MIG with gasless or shielded core, also known as flux core welding. This uses no gas, that's why it says gasless. You basically just put the wire in and uh, you just begin to weld and it'll shield itself with the gas that is emitted from inside the wire. For what I'm going to show you today is we're going to show you uh, mag because the gas that I have hooked up is an argon CO2 mix. And so when we turn it on, we're going to switch it to mag. It's probably already set there, but when you come out of the box, it'll probably be sit on MIG CO2. So you'll have to adjust it. If you're going to use straight CO2 gas, then you'll leave it on CO2. If you're going to use MAG, you're going to press it and select down to MAG for argon CO2 mix. If you're going to do stick welding, which is not what I'm going to show today, you'd select it all the way down to that and hook up your uh, electrode to uh, use a stick welder. If you're going to do TIG lift, then you'd have to buy the, the uh, additional TIG torch that uh, Yes Welder sells, and that's a whole other process. The other is, if you're going to do gasless, you'd select all the way down to gasless. But for today, we're going to do MIG uh, with argon gas, so we're going to select MAG. The next one we have over here is your uh, wire thickness for your spool of wire. When you get uh, your process selected, you're going to go over here and you're going to use this button and select what diameter wire. Today I have it set up with 35 thousandths or 0.9 millimeter. So that's what we'll select. And uh, the other thing that here you have is one button for uh, manual feed. I already showed you that when we were loading the MIG wire. The other one is gas. This will turn on your gas so you can make sure what your CFM or CFH, I should say, your cubic feet per hour, your meter is set at. You can just touch this and it'll, it'll turn on the gas for a second and you can see what level your gas is at. Uh, what you want most of the time, I usually put my gauge at about 20 CFH and if I'm going to be welding above say quarter inch and above thickness metal, I usually bump it up to about 25 CFH. And those are, those are two settings that'll get you through just about 99% of your welding. All right, let me turn it on and I'll show you these settings. So right now it's set at 140 amps and 18.4 volts. I have it set on 2T because we're just gonna weld with pressing the button and letting go. It's already set to mag because I've already used the welder. So I have it set up for mag. I can select, it'll go to 
uh, stick welder, it'll go to TIG lift, it'll go to gasless, and then back to MIG CO2. But we're gonna put it on mag for today because that's what we're gonna weld with. I already have the wire set up for 35 thousandths. There it is set for 23 thousandths, 30 thousandths, and 35 thousandths. All right, this is back to our selector button. This will select, uh, if you don't select anything, when you turn the knob, it'll adjust your amps. So these are your amps over here. These are your volts. For 99% of the welding I do, I've been using this welder, I only adjust the amps. And I have a uh, chart that I'll put up and I'll give a link to it in the description. So here is my chart that I made for uh, the basic weld settings. I would like to say that when I do things like a fillet weld, um, I bump it up about 8 to 10% uh, because I want deeper penetration uh, into the joint. So that's a good starting point. So when I turn the welder on, I basically have my settings that I've figured out and I only adjust the amperage. So if you turn the welder on, when you adjust, it'll go up and down for amps. If you want to change something else, you can go down to the next setting and this will be your thickness of metal. You can adjust how thick the metal is that you want to weld and it'll automatically adjust for you. Right now it's set on two millimeter, which it needs 17.6 volts and 129 amps. If we want to select the next field over, you can adjust the voltage that you want above or below the standard settings. Right now it's set at 17.6. If I wanted it to be a little bit higher voltage, I can adjust that by selecting voltage and you can go above or below. If you think it's too hot at the standard setting, you can go below. If you think it's too cold, you can turn it up. I generally don't touch this setting because this welder is so advanced that all of the settings have been perfect for what I do. I merely adjust the amps and it automatically feeds the right amount of wire and the right voltage for what I need. The next field that you have is inductance. We go over here. This one will go 10 negative and 10 positive. The standard setting is at zero and inductance is one of those settings that you usually only see on a very advanced welder. This particular welder has it because it is a very advanced uh, inverter technology that they're using and they programmed it in so that you have inductance. I think this is a very helpful feature and I use it on a regular basis depending on the type of weld. If I'm doing flat welds on uh, plates you know, just a butt weld, it's known as, then I'll leave it set at uh, zero on the inductance. If I'm going to do a fillet weld in a corner, I usually want the weld pool to be a little more fluid and flow into the corner a little bit. And at that point, I'll turn the inductance up. Usually, I set it at six to seven most of the time. And that's what I weld at if I'm doing a corner joint or something where I want the weld pool to be a little bit more fluid and flow into that corner. If I'm gonna be doing an outside corner, I'll select it and I'll turn the inductance down. I'll usually turn it down to about um, minus six or minus five. If I really want the weld pool and it's really thin material, I'll turn it way down even to uh, minus seven or eight. And what that does is it makes the weld pool even a little bit more solid, not to be as runny or as liquid as it would be if you had more inductance. So it kind of firms up the weld pool and makes it hold on the edge as it's welding across. That way it doesn't collapse the edge and want to and want to burn through and things like that. So that's the, what I use inductance for. And uh, it's, a, it's a pretty handy feature and I use it on a regular basis. And that's it about for the settings. Uh, what I'll do is I'll show you, uh, basically now that we have the settings set up, I'll show you some welds and how this thing welds.
This is an amazing welder and uh, it welds beautifully. All right guys, one of the most important things when you start welding is to make sure you have a good ground. This is your ground cable and the optimum would be to hook your ground cable right to your workpiece. That gives you the best ground and that gives you the best conductance of current through the workpiece and you'll get your cleanest welds. The next best thing if you're doing small parts on a bench is to get yourself a steel plate. Something that you can put on your bench that you can hook your ground to that will conduct the electricity up through into the workpiece. Since I'm just doing some small parts for demonstration, um, I'm just going to smell uh, weld some uh, eighth inch angle iron together just to show you how my technique and how I weld with this welder. And so I can't really hook the ground to it, so it's a small piece. I'm going to put it on my steel plate. That way I get a good ground right through it. All right, I'll weld this together and show you how. One of the techniques I want to show the new welders is that you want to have an overlapping uh, weld bead. When you are uh, welding two pieces together, you want to overlap the beads, what a lot of people call um, layering of dimes or laying down dimes. Um, some people call it a stack of dimes. Anyway, what that does is it gives you much deeper penetration into your welds. If you just burn a weld in a straight line, you'll hold two things together and it'll work fine if you're just gonna build a gate in your backyard. If you're building something that needs to be structural, then you want to make sure that you do an overlapping bead. A lot of people do uh, a cursive E and they'll loop as they go along. Um, that's a great method. A lot of people weld and pause, weld and pause, weld and pause, weld and pause. That's another great method. For me, I do basically an upside down E. I loop over the top and come back around, loop over the top, come back around. That's just what's most comfortable for me. You have, everybody has to figure out what works for them. Um, there's many different ways to do the same you know, end result. That's just the way that you know, a few different people I've watched do it. The best thing you can do is practice. When you get your welder, take some scrap metal, scribe some lines, usually quarter inch to three eighths of an inch in thickness or eight to nine millimeter wide, and practice running your beads down between those two lines and practice keeping the weld puddle the same width all the way down. It takes a lot of concentration and a lot of uh, steadiness in your hand. One of the things that you should also do is do a dry run. When you set your metal up, you want to make sure that you're comfortable from the beginning of the weld to the end of the weld. So you start out at one end and you get to the finish line here without having to move your body or anything else. You want to set yourself up so that if you have to do a very long weld, you're over here and you can pivot all the way to the other end without having to move your body and do it all with just the gun and a pivot. That way you can do your weld, finish, and you don't have to stop and start in the middle. That's one of the ways to make really good looking welds is not have stops and starts all the way down the weld. All right. This is uh, eighth inch, but it's a little bit thicker in the web. So I'm gonna crank up the amps a little bit, up to 135 amps, and uh, see how it does.
All right, let me show you uh, what it looks like. One of the things you'll notice about this welder is how smooth it welds. You notice there's not an enormous amount of slag and splatter all over this weld. That's because the inverter technology that this welder uses, it minimizes the slag and the splatter. It's one of my favorite parts of uh, using this Yes Welder MIG is that it makes my welds look very clean. It's not all splattered and I don't have to do a bunch of grinding to clean it up. Um, and so all you really need to do is set it up, use my chart uh, that I'm going to put up at the end here in the comment section and get started welding and practicing. And I think you really enjoy this welder. It's an amazing, uh, amazing MIG welder for the money. Okay. All right, guys, that's it for this video of how to set up your Yes Welder MIG 205 DS. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. And I hope you learned something about how to set this thing up and get started welding. Uh, this is a great welder and I think you'll enjoy it if you uh, just use my basic settings that I started. It's always a good way to get started with uh, You know some basic settings, but everybody needs to experiment with their setup and Their welder when they get it my settings that I use may not be exactly the same as what you come up with The best thing about welding is that you can fine-tune it down to exactly the needs that you have for whatever project that you're doing um, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of videos coming, a whole bunch of projects that I'm going to roll out over the next few months and weeks. Um, if you want to be notified, hit the bell so you're notified when I have these new videos. I would appreciate it. Okay, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.